Hello and welcome to this week's edition of The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher. This week finds us in Bethlehem, in a property that's being converted into a radio station complete with studios. The man with the vision for this station is Paul Calvert, who originates from Cumbria in northern England. Bethlehem is today in the area known as the West Bank, where the population is entirely Palestinian, the majority of whom are Muslims. So I asked Paul, where did it all begin for him? Well, it all began over three and a half years ago when uh, I really felt God was calling me to do a radio show with the vision of starting a radio station. So three and a half years ago, we started paying for a show to go out every week on a commercial radio station. And that was a big leap of faith paying. At, at the time, we were paying either 60 or $70 an hour to do that. So I had to raise up all the money. And we always say we've got faith, but I think we realize we don't. And then God teaches us faith. And I learned and we paid for the shows to go out on a commercial radio station. Then we moved stations to go to another radio station and it went to $100 a week, which is a very wise decision to move on to a different station because we got a much better deal, but it was more expensive. And again, you think, oh, I need extra money, will God provide? And then he provides and we see all the money come in. And we've been basically doing that for three and a half years with the vision of starting the radio station right here in Bethlehem. So that's what we've been doing. And why? Why do you want to start a radio station in Bethlehem? Who are you trying to reach and what's the message? Our target audience is the youth between the ages of 15 and 30. And here within the Palestinian area in Bethlehem, there is no hope. They struggle with hope. They can go to university, they can work and study for two and a half, three years. And that's a struggle within itself because the families can't afford to send their children to the university. So they struggle with that. Then once the children have finished university, there's no guarantee that they will get a job within what they've studied. So you could go and study one thing and end up being a taxi driver. And we want to bring hope into this area because there is that real sense of hopelessness. Palestinians, they can't go to Jerusalem. There's travel restrictions. They can travel a little bit, but not a whole lot. And life is difficult. The wage is very low. And it's a fight and it's a struggle. And within that fight and struggle, we want to bring some hope and bring some peace and encourage the youth of the community. So we're starting a community radio station but we'll be playing Christian music. And this isn't the sort of church music that you normally get in a church. This is the music that the youth like to listen to. Uh, They all love the music of the West, but sadly, a lot of the music of the West, the lyrics and the words are very, very bad. So we want to provide an alternative for that, to give them words that uh, tell them that there is hope, there is meaning, there's truth and there's light, and you can be part of that. Are you broadcasting all your programmes in English or will there be any Arabic content? That's something that we've been thinking about for a long time. Predominantly the music will be English, although we'd be very, very happy to bring good quality Christian, like rap music, hip hop if it's rap and things like that. We'll be happy to bring that in. So we will do Arabic music as well. Programmes will be presented both in English and in Arabic because this is a radio station for the community. This isn't one English guy coming into Bethlehem and telling everybody how it's done. We want to come in, set it up, establish it, but then hand it over to the community and then the community will run it. And that's our main focus and our main vision. I've been here for 10 years and there's no guarantee I'm going to be able to stay for much longer with my visas. So it has to be established and set up with Palestinians within the local community and the area. And that's really what we're wanting to do is encourage and not only just do the radio, but actually train people up in media as well. Help people to understand how to go out there and do an interview to do a good interview. They can bring it back to here and we'll play it on air. And they get encouraged with that. At the moment, I'm working on another radio station and we're just trying to encourage the community to get out there and make a difference. So I do interviews with many, many different organizations, whether it's disabled children, working in other organizations and say, these guys are making a difference. Why don't you get out there and make a difference? Don't complain about your situation, but get out there and make a difference. And we've also been trying to encourage people as well to to bring their music in. Send us some of your music. If you're making something from Bethlehem, we want to play this out to the community for Bethlehem so people can see that something is happening, that it isn't always negative and it isn't always down, but things are happening here in Bethlehem. We have talented people here that can make a difference. 
you've just shown us around this property in Bethlehem that has become available for you. Mm. You've been busy painting it and getting it ready and building your studio. Do you feel quite daunted by the size of this project? It has to be step by step. You know, we've got a reception area, so we're going to need a receptionist at one time. We're going to need a station manager. We're going to be having people coming in and out. There are wages to pay and a station to run and there's bills to pay when you need to have, have internet connections, telephone connections. I've been out signing contracts for this and, you know, and it's, oh my goodness, this is starting to get serious now. Whereas before it was just a little show and you just played it. So it is uh, a big, big thing now, but it's a, in some ways it sometimes does feel daunting, but God is in control and, and I think it is step by step and God is taking us step by step and, you know, he'll not give us a burden that is bigger than that we can bear. I love the house here because it's got such a great spiritual heritage. Before we had it, Youth With A Mission were in here and the family who rented it out to us, a Christian family, a good, solid Christian family, uh, the father died and they decided we want to give this house over to ministry. So they don't just want to rent it out to anybody. It's been waiting for the right ministries to come in at the right time. So down below us, we have some Koreans living here and they're doing ministry. And then we have came in uh, to do ministry on this level. And it's nice uh, during the Intifada, for instance, they were coming in and they were praying in the house. So we know that there's, there's good solid prayer that's been established in this house. So we're, we're coming on a foundation that other people have built upon really. For you, Paul, as you mentioned, you've been here in the Holy Land for 10 or more years, gradually getting to know people. You've been helping in schools. You've been helping in, with the disabled people. So what does it mean for you personally as you've, as you've walked this walk of faith? Has it really been an encouragement to you as well as a challenge? Well, yeah, I've been here for 10 years. This is my 10th year in the land. And I've got to know so many different people and ministry has changed for me. And I think God has been developing me over the years. So when I came in, I was doing renovation work, but, but my heart was to do something more. Renovation work is still ministry, but I wanted to do more, I wanted to do something different. And God began to bring about some of those things, working with King's kids, working in the schools. And that's been the foundation stone. And then suddenly radio opened up and that's been a foundation stone. Uh, you know, I've been learning how to interview people uh, and every step of the way, God has been leading and guiding. And uh, to this point now where we have a vision and a ministry that's developing and establishing. And one thing I love about the Bethlehem area, there are many, many Christian ministries in the area. And I love hearing their stories. So for instance, today we've been to the Bible College and I've interviewed Bashara who started the Bible College. And he says, we started with $20. That's how it started. God gave him a vision and gave him $20. And he started from that. Well, if you go and see the, the Bible College today, you look at the facilities that they have today, huge, big facilities. God has grown and God has blessed as they've been faithful with that. And I see that God is beginning to do the same with me. All we had was a little tiny show for one hour. Well, now God is giving us a station. And from that station, you never know what we could have outside broadcasts, vehicles. You know, we may actually start radio stations all over different areas of the Palestinian area. So what starts off as a little tiny seed can grow to something really, really great if we keep our vision and focus on God. So let me ask you to look ahead to the future. What would be your vision, your dream for the next three, five years? To really develop the station here, to have it strong. We've got a lot of work to do to let people know that we're here because at the moment we are on the internet. It's not broadcasting via transmitter. So people have got to know that we're here. But I think ultimately I would love to see a transmitter up there and um, broadcasting from the hill of Bejala so that everybody within the community can just turn on their radio and listen to us. That's my ultimate dream. Uh, technology is changing so much over the years that we may not need to do that because internet radio may be the next big thing. So we sort of, it's whatever God wants us to do. He's going to lead us, he's going to guide us and where we go from there. As well, I'd love to do some work more in television, perhaps take the radio show to television. And we have been looking at that. Doors haven't quite opened yet, but uh, I'm sure in the future there could be some opportunities there. So the future's exciting. You never know where God is going to lead you in these things. So it's definitely exciting. You're a true pioneer. 
and you've been pioneering in an area where there are very, very few evangelical Christians. Yet uh, Bethlehem is a place where there is, as you say, a lot of hope and, and a future. So how can Christians listening to this radio program pray and support you? Really pray for the youth. Pray that God would touch their hearts. There are Christians in this area, but being a Christian means you're struggling. And it's a fight, it's a daily fight, because it's hard to be encouraged when you're getting something like five pounds a day in your work, and you, you have no money, you can't travel anywhere, life is tough and it's a fight. So for the Christian community, it really, really is tough and there really is no hope. So we really need to pray for the people in the area that we as a ministry can actually be a hope and an encouragement. And that's what our hope and our aim is to be, is just to really be a blessing in the community and bring hope to this area because it really has that sense of hopelessness in the community. So. You know, just pray for the youth, pray that God would give them visions and dreams that they can get out there and make a difference. And that's what we're trying to do. We want to encourage youth. You know, don't just complain about your situation, get out there and make a difference and that the youth would see that they can have a vision and a dream. Whether it's something small, God can grow it and make it bigger. It doesn't have to be a big vision. It could be small and it's faithfulness that counts. And we can't end this interview without asking you what you're going to call this radio station. Well, we're still working on a name at the moment, but I think we've sort of pinned it down to about three names. Sound of Bethlehem is very popular with the Palestinian community. A name that I quite like is Star Radio. And also, because we do a radio show called Nagam al which means Rhythms of Life, it seems, well, maybe we should be building on the name that we already have. So we've got three names in the pot, and we're going to have to decide very, very soon which name we're going to do. Paul Calvert sharing his vision to start a radio station to broadcast programmes that bring a message of hope and encouragement to the people living in Bethlehem. And you're listening to The Olive Tree with me, Julia Fisher. And The Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a Christian charity based in the UK that supports the needs of both Jewish believers and Arab Christians living in Israel and the wider Middle East. If you would like to know more about our work and receive our free bi-monthly newsletter, please either visit our website, olivetreefund.org, or write to me, Julia Fisher, at the Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund, P.O. Box 850, Horsham, RH12, 9GA in the UK. Join me for another story from the Olive Tree. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.